It's very essential to know that yod Hey wave did not enter into the scripture until 6th and 5th century BC. And this is the exact time, 586 BC, when the Babylonian captivity was happening to the tribe of Judah, Levi, Benjamin, and Simeon. It's essential to know that yod Hey wave was looked at as a Judean deity. Where's the first time that we see yod Hey wave or Yahu or Jah? The first time we see yod Hey wave is with the Midianites and the Kenites in 2nd millennial BC. Now we have clearly seen yod Hey wave being represented among the Shashu of Yahweh. And this is when the Hebrews began to worship yod Hey wave or Yahu or Yah alongside Osiris in 1600 BC in ancient Egypt. However, the name that we were grabbed out of Ur with is El Shaddai. And this literally just means the God of fertility, the breasted deity. His true name would be rooted in Alelu. This is the father God in the ancient Mesopotamia pantheon before Anu of the Anunnaki's began to take over. And when we began to look at the Quran, it begins to say Al-Halu. Then when you began to look at Al-Halu, he had a son by the name of Kum Ivri. And Ivri is literally Hebrew. His name was Kum Arbri. And so when you look at Kum, it means arise in Aramaic. In the Quran, his name is Al Halu Kum. And it means he who ever existed, the one who sustains and protects all existence. So when we begin to look at the Aramaic name of the Most High, it is Allah Kum Ivri. Alelu Kum Ivri. And this is just what it is. yod Hey wave is by al Pior, who the Midianite priest taught Moses to sacrifice to. The name means Lord. And this is why when he begins to bring us into the wilderness and purge us, we will no longer call him yod Hey wave or Lord. We will call him Ishi, which means husband. And the Quran begins to read, Kum which is arise, Allah, la ila ila hua, which means none has the right to be worshipped but he. Al hal u kum, meaning the ever living, the one who sustains and protects all the that exists, neither slumber nor sleeps, overtakes him. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows what happens to them, his creatures in this world, and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never compass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. His courtesy extends over the heavens and the earth, and he feels no fatigue in regarding and preserving them. And he is the most high, the most great. This is in the Sarah 2 and 255 once again yod hate wave was not intended to be worshipped by the israelites and this is the reason why el shaddai began to say when i brought you out of egypt i did not ask for sacrifices i told you to keep my commandments el is seen in the text in ninth century bc which begins to predate the Yahweh text. When they begin to warn us against the scribes and the Pharisees, it is due to the fact that yod Hey wave began to take over the attributes from Set, which is a desert deity, the red god. And this is something that we should not deny that has been inserted into the biblical text because we want to make sure that we are worshiping the Most High in his beauty of holiness for exactly who he is and what he does. Come out from amongst them and be ye separated.